Alright, I had a couple requests to uh, explain how you disassemble this GE FanForce Radiant Heater. It's actually really quite easy. If you're too lazy to go find the appropriate size socket like I am, just grab yourself uh, pliers or something and remove these two bolts here, screws, whatever they are. Mine weren't even loose, or <laughs> mine weren't even tight. But I guess the first order of business is just pop that little handle right off. You just kind of pull it apart and lift it out of the holes, smash into the tripod. Oh, and by the way, real quick, look at that, Hobby Central cleaned his table. Now well, that's something you don't see every day. And then, got two Phillips head screws on the top on each side here. I guess I should say this before we carry on. It's more of a disclaimer covering my butt. Know your limits when you're dealing with uh, stuff like this. There's a lot of amperage going through heaters and if you mess something up and you've got this thing running unattended and it burns your house down, then it ain't my fault. You do this at your own risk. Not to scare you away from it or nothing. I always fix my own stuff and really it's not rocket science. You just take it slow and this thing here kind of should pop out. There we, go. we got the grill off. Now I gotta think for a second. Oh, we got two more screws right at the bottom here. You can see I'm missing my grommet. Person should have something there whether it's even just a simple knot in the cord on the other side of this hole here on the inside just so you can't reef on the connections in there although super preferably use a grommet like one of those squeeze down kind squeezes the cord together when you pop it in not just a regular old grommet that the cord can still slide through freely knots work but you know if you do end up yanking on this a lot over time this tin could start cutting into the cord and well, I mean, we obviously don't want that. So long since I took this apart, I'm forgetting about all its screws hidden everywhere. Okay, now these covers should pop off of here. I think. Got myself a flat screwdriver. Just gonna very carefully pry these out here. There we go, there's one side. Oh yeah, can't forget to pop the thermostat handle uh, knob off. It just pulls right off. At least it should anyways it might be kind of stuck it's been on there for like 40 years now you can see what i mean how this center piece just kind of has to be pressed together and then the end caps squished on i'm personally only prying down here just so i inevitably mess up the paint a little bit it's on the bottom where you're not going to see there it goes and this whole center assembly should just lift right out of here Grommet, cord will go right through. Here's the guts of the thing. See, these would be the connections you'd be yanking on if you don't have a, some sort of grommet thing preventing you from pulling on that cord. Here's the fan. Oh, it's spinning. This fan didn't seem to be working when I made that power testing video of the older heaters. So I definitely don't recommend doing this, but I'm just going to plug it in just so you can see that fan giver. A given her. Whew, those elements are stinking. Got a lot of dust on them. So that is what you would expect to find inside of one of these antique GE Fan Force Radiant heaters. There is not much to them. One of the people who had asked me how to take this thing apart said he has smoke coming out from inside the unit. The only possible places smoke could be coming from is one of these wires. Who knows, maybe it's shorted. You'd think it would kick the breaker. Maybe it's got a loose connection here and it's burning the insulation on either side. If you do want to take your heater apart, these would be the places to check. Don't touch the elements with your fingers because the oils from your skin will shorten their life. Get a pliers or something on this side to hold this side of the bolt and then gently make sure these uh, this nut is tight although you know if you grab the wire and you wiggle it around and it's not loose in the connection it's probably fine but 
Then you got your thermostat. You never know, maybe the thermostat's what's smoking on you. Although I've never personally seen a thermostat smoke. You never know, maybe your uh, contact points are all burnt and they're getting poor connection and getting way too hot. And maybe some dust is burning off of them. But I don't know. The other last possible thing that could be smoking could maybe even be the fan motor itself. Maybe the windings are cooked or something. There's no real connections to check on the fan motor itself because they go into the windings. As you can see the fan just connects right up with the heater element up here. In order to remove this fan motor from the heater, I should just remove them, but it seems as if I've got a nut on the other side that won't let me unscrew the screw. So in that case, we have to gently get this fan blade off of here. The best way to do that, I think, is reach from behind with your fingers. Get your fingers up underneath the center hub of this fan blade. Don't push on the blades, you'll bend them. Try to get it to pop off of there. Oh. Well, I guess the little rubber nub never came off. Hopefully it didn't bend when it went flying to the floor. All right, now we would loosen the two nuts that fasten the motor onto the heater. I guess one thing I should quickly point out, as far as this thermostat goes, there's really nothing a person can do with it. Like, don't go dropping oil on these pivot points and stuff. You, you don't, you don't need to oil the thermostat. I'm sure you probably already know that, but I just had to point that out. We want that thermostat nice and dry. If anything, just kind of blow the dust out of it, and that's kind of the best you can do. If you got an air compressor, that's even better. Anyways, here is our fan. Now, I mean, it's just a typical fan oiling procedure after this. Boy, isn't that just the cutest little C-frame motor you ever saw? <laughs> Now these bearings are simply held on by two screws as you're going to be able to see. One side's got a nut, you just hold that with your fingers or pliers. Take your screwdriver, run out the screw. And your bearings should pop right off of there now. Something that's very important, don't mess up which side this rotor shaft goes into the C-frame stator. If the rotor, let's say, was switched around like this, now your fan's going to be spinning in the opposite direction. So it's good practice, just uh, make sure you always, always keep your rotor in the stator. You're going to have a bunch of different sized, tiny little spacers on each end of the rotor. Make sure you don't lose them and make sure you don't end up swapping these around because usually these spacers are specifically spaced. So that when this assembly is all together, this rotor is riding evenly inside of the stator. Your rotor's got to be perfectly centered or at least very close to it. I don't know if you're going to pick it up on camera, but it says 6-75. And something I never noticed, the first time I took this apart years ago, is on the bearing here, there's another year, 1969, that's the patent year. So that's not exactly the year of the unit, but I'm trying to decide if I should try to clean and re-oil these bearings since I've got it all apart. I can tell the wicks are still nice and soaked up with oil. Now, I don't know if I'm necessarily recommending you need to go this far. All you really got to do with yours, roll up a piece of paper towel small enough to fit in here, douse it with some oil that's... Designated for electric motors. Any non-detergent oil will work great. Just make sure it's non-detergent. This three-in-one stuff here is C20 weight. I wouldn't mind to find some 10 weight oil for these little wee tiny motors. All I got is my C20 three-in-one oil. So, but I'm just gonna go a little bit further here and just disassemble this bearing. Now, here is the sleeve bearing. That's all there is to these bearings. 
They're just crushed, centered bronze material that absorb oil. And on top of that, it's got a wick around it that also can absorb oil. That's the way these things work, is they just stay absorbed with oil, and when the rotor spins in there, it wicks the oil out of the pores and keeps a constant film of oil between the rotor and this bearing. Anyways, last time I oiled this, I just oiled it, and I'm not sure if I used detergent oil or not. I'm thinking I might have, because back in the day, I used to love my detergent 3-in-1 oil, and I actually recommended using detergent oil back then, but now I don't, because I have been notified that it tends to gunk up over time. Just the detergents in it kind of gum up. And at the time, people were warning me of that. I hadn't noticed any issues, but after probably a total of six years of fans that were oiled with detergent oil i'm noticing they're starting to gum up a little bit some of them so definitely don't use detergent oil it's too bad because it's really nice for cleaning out the bearing thoroughly but but then like i already said it just gums up later on so it's kind of a double-edged sword right there you can see all the oil i've been wicking out of here all I'm doing here is just squeezing it in some paper towel. Letting the paper towel wick the oil out of this old wick. There we go, it's a lot brighter now. You can tell there's not nearly as much oil in it as there once was. Set that on my nice clean table. Now I'll go ahead and kind of give this uh, sleeve bearing a nice wipe down. Some paper towel through it there and I'm just gonna spin it. These bearings aren't scorched or anything, so that's awesome. They should work really good. If a sleeve bearing was ran dry for too long, as I like to call it, it'll scorch the bearing, which I think essentially what happens is the material on the inner race of this bearing will kind of almost melt and get super, super shiny, even when there's no oil in there. And that's telling me that it must close off the pores and then the rotor doesn't wick the oil out of the bearing properly anymore. So you, you'll oil it, it'll work great for just a little while and then go back to squealing or whatever. Although sometimes if you just take them apart and clean them out again and put some more oil on them, sometimes they'll cheer up. Okay, plop our wick back down in the holder. Now, I don't think this bearing had any specific way it needed to go in, so I am just going to put it in this way. And our retainer here simply should just push right back in. Might need to coax it with a flat screwdriver. Like I said, I'm not necessarily recommending that you need it actually disassemble the bearing you usually just get away with putting probably about six seven drops on each side of the wick and then just a drop or two on the bearing itself it's usually all you need to do okay now sometimes this happens i'm trying to take this bearing off here and you can see it stops don't force it whatever you do don't force it if it's not rusty and it's just got some gunk on it, you can go ahead and just give it a really good wipe down. Maybe uh, take some oil, a couple drops on the rag. Wipe that rotor shaft down with that oily rag. Clean it up, get a nice film of oil on there and see if it comes apart. Uh, and it did. Still getting a little stuck at the top there, so. Now, I find Scotch-Brite works really good to give these rotor shafts a quick sand when the bearing won't pop off, but even some very high grit sandpaper will work. Or if just attacking this with the wire brush would be good enough. Too lazy to go to the house and get my Scotch-Brite pad. Of course, always wipe it very thoroughly so you're not grinding shavings into the bearing. And that was enough, right on. Set it in the stator just like that, so I know. Oh yeah, another thing, if you do want to take your motor apart to clean the bearings and stuff really good, you should, one side at a time, so you don't mess up placement of the washers. You should take the washers off, one by one, and give them a good wipe. You don't have to put oil on them, just because all it's going to do is drip down and get everywhere it shouldn't be. I'm going to leave those alone, because I've already cleaned them. The oil! 
about one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And just kind of little goop on there in the center. I'm just going to leave that sit for a little while and see how those wicks look. See if they still look kind of wet or if they look like they've dried up. Another thing I used to do that I don't anymore is man I'd literally just pump these things right full. Like right full. <laughs> I don't do that anymore because then a few months down the road your whole fan motor is just soaked in oil. You, there is such a thing as over oiling these bearings. It's probably also a really good idea to keep your back bearing at the back and your front bearing at the front. You probably shouldn't swap them around just because although this isn't exactly the internals of a combustion engine it's not that important but I, I like to think it's kind of important. You know like the wear patterns on this bearing are going to match up to this side of the rotor and the wear patterns of this bearing is going to match up to this side of the rotor. Like I said, it's probably not that big of a deal, but... Now you want to be super careful doing this because that centered bronze bearing is very soft. So you don't want to be messing it up at all, but what I'm doing is my flat fits perfectly inside of the bearing cover and pushes on the bearing. I'm just kind of giving it some light pushes to make sure I've got my retainer ring in all the way and it's going to actually hold the bearing in and not fall apart when I get it all back together. One, two, three, four. Now will be a good time to check our other bearing. You know what? Looks like we could put about two more drops in there. One, two, one, two. There we go. It looks like the oil is starting to absorb a little bit slower into this wick now, so I know it's getting about full. Perfect. And like I said, I don't think I need to clean my spacer washer deals, so let's reassemble this baby. Just a tiny bit of oil on your fingers and kind of put it at the beginning of the rotor shaft there so we're not sliding this bearing on dry although there's oil inside the bearing because I already put some in there but now nah, we're just being thorough. I'm going to make sure we put our bearing bolts in the right way. Put them in backwards we won't be able to attach the motor onto the heater. Cables on a little bit of a slant and everything just beelines it that way. Now usually these bearings don't have to be extraordinarily tight. Just kind of snug them up. I've done it before where I've tightened the belligerents out of them and I've literally deformed the stator. Kind of went Hulk mode on them. Okay, now that it's all back together, I'm just going to quickly dab any excess oil that I may have pushed out of the bearing here. Good. Now my motor seems to be spinning fine, but sometimes when you put a motor back together like this, all of a sudden your rotor is really tight and it won't turn. Don't worry. Just gently tap on all four sides of the rotor shaft like this. And you'll realign the bearings again. And it'll spin like butter. But don't, and I repeat, don't smash them. I've done that before too. I used to just whack on these things and you'll actually mess up that retainer ring on the inside especially on newer cheaper fans. You'll mess that retainer ring up and it'll actually loose the bearings will be loose in there. Then your motor will hum and vibrate and you'll wonder why it's louder than when you started. Alright I'm gonna put this little rubber nub on. Or wait no I did that wrong. <laughs> We're going to install the rubber nub into the fan blade first and then we're going to put it on when we're ready to, when we got the motor back in there. Okay, we got her. Actually, just real quick, since I flung my fan blade across the room, I'm just going to make sure all the blades are still even. Ah, it's good. Alright, now we pop that up in there. Put our blade on. 
Alright, now again I'm just going to plug it in real quick just to, so we can see this fan giving her. And it still spins slow off the start like it used to. But it's such a weak motor and that thicker C20 oil I guess is just a little too much for this motor. That oil has to heat up and thin out before it can spin up. Now I guess reassembly. Just do one side at a time. A bit of a trick to get this uh, to pop all back on here again. Okay, we got this side on. Yep, I remember how difficult this was. Here we go. We're on. Alright. Put this on before I get too far. Well, can't forget about our thermostat. Well, there will be a cutaway in the shaft that will made up with that uh, cross piece in there. Kind of find where it wants to pop in and there it goes. Let's watch her fire up. Oh, look at that, my fan even took off. Awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it helped. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, you're a champ. It's putting on more heat than my wood stove is right now. <laughs> or just any deterred arch.